It's time for On Point, where we speak to experts to delve deeper into some of the key issues in the spotlight right now. The Korean Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter, also known as Tanuri in Korean, is set to be launched this Friday from Florida after being delayed from its initial launch date of Wednesday local time. With the help of NASA, the satellite will take four months to reach the moon, but once it gets there, it will orbit for a year, providing scientists with very valuable information. So just how sophisticated is this mission and how far has space technology come for South Korea? For answers, let's connect with An jae -myung, Associate Professor of Aerospace Engineering at KAIST. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. So first, Apollo 11 is known to have transported human beings to the moon in just four days. Why is the KPLO or Tanuri taking so long to get to the moon's orbit? So well, there are several different trajectory options for lunar missions, such as the direct insertion, phase transfer, and ballistic lunar transfer. The tra uh, trajectory option used for the Apollo 11 was the direct insertion, which took just four days. And between the different trajectory options, we usually have the trade-off between the fuel efficiency and transfer time. That is a trajectory that consumes less fuel, usually takes longer time. And the trajectory used for the Danuri, called as the Ballistic Lunar Transfer, uh, BLT, is an energy efficient one. In BLT, uh, the spacecraft is sent to the vicinity of the Earth's sun L1 point, which is approximately 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth, and is sent back to the Moon. So the BLT takes a long time with the lunar transfer, uh, four and a half months, but uh, however, compared to the direct insertion or phase transfer trajectories, it is known that the BLT can save up to 25% of fuel used to make an orbit at the moon. So the saved fuel can be used to extend the scientific mission period in the lunar orbit. Um, Professor, well, how significant is this technology to monitor the moon? And are there other countries currently operating a mission similar to KPLO? So the, the technology that used with the Danuri are, are important from the scientific and engineering viewpoint. So one of the main scientific payload of Danuri is the Lunar Terrain Imager, LUTI. It is a high resolution camera that can take pictures of the lunar surface. The information gathered by LUTI will be used to identify the candidate sites for the future lunar lander missions. Also, the shadow cam developed by the Arizona State University of the United States can explore the permanently shadows regions of the lunar pores, uh, helping to figure out the presence of the ice deposit on the moon's surface. And there are a couple of the recent orbiter and lander missions that I uh, remember. Uh, in 2019, uh, Israel successfully put their the battleship spacecraft to the lunar orbit, but failed in its landing mission. India also successfully put their Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft to the lunar orbit in 2019, but their lander mission also failed. In 2020, China succeeded in the sample return mission Chang'e 5. Uh, the mission returned 1.7 kg of the sample from the moon. Very recently, a CubeSat-based lunar mission called Capstone is launched by NASA in late June this year. It also used a ballistic lunar transfer that Danuri is using and will arrive at the moon mid-November, I remember, uh, approximately one month before Danuri. Right, and like you said, other co countries have been p trying to achieve the success in this type of missions as well, but what about the satellite Danuri? Like, what happens? Because we know that the operation is supposed to be a year long, um, what happens to the satellite itself after the operation is finished? Yes, the spacecraft for human mission or the robotic sample return mission uh, returns to the Earth after they complete the operations on the Moon or Mars. But Danuri is an orbital mission that is not a sample return mission. So after Danuri spacecraft conducts various missions for about one year, it does not return to the Earth, unfortunately. Maybe it will continue orbiting around the Moon, and because there is no atmosphere on the Moon, maybe they, uh, it will stay longer at the Moon orbit. 
And well, we know that the launch has been delayed already, but um, how likely are we, uh, are we to see a lift off on the updated schedule and what factors do you think might push the launch further? Well, the first the launch vehicle and dynamic spacecraft should be technologically ready for launch. Even in that situation, we have to consider the weather and other conditions required for the successful launch. The wind, both the surface and the high altitude wind should not exceed a certain criterion. The probability of the struck by the lightning or the probability of the collision with the space debris should be sufficiently low. So as we all know that uh, these conditions are not something that we can control. And I wish that the weather and space debris condition is favorable tomorrow with my fingers crossed. Sorry, and we all have our fingers crossed as well for a successful mission. And we can't wait to hear about what the scientists actually find out from the satellite. So thank you so much for your time and good morning. Have a good rest thank of the day. You. Yeah, thank you for my pleasure. Thank you.